the Times of India group is a testimony to its commitment to academic excellence. Spread over an area of 35 acres, the institution houses more than 1,000 students across three courses, BBA, MBA, and doctoral programs in management. May I now request the dignitaries to come up on the stage uh, and my uh, and my for this. I request the dignitaries to please like the lack of this one. Thank you, everybody. Before we proceed, may I request everyone to please keep their mobile phones in switch off mode or silent for the uh, smooth conduct of event. We have with us Professor S. N. Mishra, Dean, KIT School of Management. Professor Mishra was an officer in the Indian Defense Account Service where he served as the Director of Finance with DRDO. Post retirement, he teaches economics and contributes handsomely to prestigious research journals. Sir, kindly set the context of the conference. Distinguished uh, dignitaries on the stage, uh, Professor Sutton, who is the chief uh, speaker, my dear uh, colleagues from the School of Management and other schools, and the, all the online participants, uh, which would be about 250 from within India and abroad from 15 countries. I have been asked to uh, set the context of this unique international seminar, which is being conducted in a hybrid mode. Um, Professor Achyut Samant, our uh, a venerable founder for Keaton Case University is unfortunately not present here today, but uh, in a very uh, perceptive uh, 
um, address to all of us, uh, he has mentioned that uh, Keat actually, the school of management is acting like a bridge between the academicians and the practitioners. And the uh, school of management has been playing this unique role as a bridge between uh, the corporate sector and the academicians. And uh, he also believes that industry 4.0, uh, which is the in thing today uh, all over the world, uh, hasn't really picked up momentum. And uh, he believes that uh, unless we are into uh, industry 4.0, embrace artificial intelligence and other related uh, tools, uh, we certainly will not be part of the modern global knowledge. Uh, so therefore, uh, this two-day uh, conference will take a holistic view of different dimensions to the problem, uh, whether it is HR, marketing, finance, economics, strategy, operation, entrepreneurship, and uh, uh, sociology. Uh, we have a large number of uh, presenters who will be making the presentation uh, today and tomorrow. Uh, but I think before uh, we have the technical sessions, uh, let me try to, confine, to set the context uh, in two areas, economics and uh, sociology. Now, as all of you have been knowing that uh, today, uh, the Central Statistical Organization for the first time has brought out that uh, the growth story of India has ticked. Uh, from uh, a minus 24% uh, in the first quarter and minus 7.3% in the second quarter, uh, India has clocked 0.4% positive growth in the third quarter. So that's a, that's a, that's a very, very important uh, signature that uh, the recovery in India is taking a V curve and not a U curve or a K curve as many of the uh, observers seem to be believing. So therefore, uh, I think uh, the India is on the mend. Though uh, the, the overall assessment is that uh, the dip in GDP growth could be about 8%. Uh, but I think India seems to be on the road to recovery, so which is a uh, good sign. But there are certain issues which need to be confronted, like the vulnerability of the unorganized sector, which accounts for almost 93% uh, of people. Uh, India needs to look into the health sector, the quality of education, uh, scaling. Uh, so these are very, very major challenges which are uh, there. But one of the most uh, depressing uh, trends which uh, the COVID-19 witnessed was a tendency towards deglobalization and hypernationalism. Even uh, the French president who has uh, very, very good credentials as a liberal, he also talked of food nationalism. So I think it's time that uh, one needs to address uh, whether uh, in the post-COVID uh, world, we are going to be nationalistic or we get back to globalization and uh, the great benefits that can flow out of it. Um, the other thing which, is, uh, which I think is a very disquieting concern uh, is the bureaucratization of administration. As all of you know, Marx Weber, uh, while he talked uh, eloquently about the rational legal structure of bureaucracy, often lamented uh, the red tapism and lack of professionalization. Uh, even Francis Fukuyama in many of his uh, articles has uh, been lamenting about the lack of professionalization in bureaucracy. So therefore, I think uh, the kind of challenges that India would be witnessing or even uh, globally would need to look at, uh, have a fresh look at the approach, how the whole thing would be administered, and uh, the synergy between the corporate sector, the administration, and also the academicians, as all of us, have to really address all these issues with a far greater objectivity. Finally, friends, uh, let me mention, friends, that uh, economic forecasting can be very, very uh, dicey. I just uh, want to quote, uh, uh, you know, Galbraith, who had said that uh, the only job of economic forecasting uh, is to make astrology look uh, respectable. So I think, uh, I think there is a need uh, to be very, very careful about how we uh, predict how, what is going to happen. 
but I'm very, very happy in this very important conference, we're going to uh, look at uh, a slew of challenges which uh, face all the countries, including India. And I, I'm happy that um, the, it, it is being uh, debated on a global platform and the deliberations I'm sure would be extremely useful, both from the policy point of view and also for the uh, pathway that we are going to discuss. Thank you, friends. Thank you so much, sir. It's always a pleasure listening to you. For the welcome address, we have among us Dr. S. K. Mahapatra, Director. KIT School of Management. Dr. Mahapatra has held leadership positions for over a decade in renowned corporate groups in India like Tata, Bajaj, and Jindal, including Navratna PSU Sale and Multinational Postco. He is widely acknowledged as a HR thought leader, strategist, and turnaround specialist. After taking over institutional leadership in NCR, he received the Rashtra Siksha Gaurav Puraskar in 2018 from Center for Education Growth and Research and Visionary Leader of the Year for 2019 from Integrated Chambers of Commerce and Industry in New Delhi. Sir, can you take over the stage? Good afternoon. Esteemed uh, Vice Chancellor Professor Hrishikesh Mahanti, esteemed keynote speaker Professor Mark Shatin, respected Dean Dr. Shan Mishra, my colleague, peer directors. Professor Nishit Parida, Sivanandabhav, and others. My colleagues in the faculty at School of Management, as well as university. Beloved research scholars who are pursuing PhD research in our school. And my dear students of MBA and BBA, who have joined on the virtual board. Members of the media, guests, and all those whose name I forget to mention. I extend a warm welcome to all of you on behalf of our honorable founder, faculty, staff, and students of Kate School of Management. To this international conference on a very seminal theme Reimagining, reinventing the future of work. Looking at the challenges and opportunities and laying a path ahead. In fact, no topic would have been more ideal for this kind of a conference, which you can visualize from the setup in which we are holding this conference today. It's called a hybrid conference. Who could have imagined a year back that a conference would be held with people joining from across different countries, from different campuses, some of them physically present in an auditorium here, and most of them present in the virtual world. And it's going on seamlessly, as you will observe it today and tomorrow by the end when we come to the validation, validation section, you will find that the proceedings will be normal. And many people call it the signature of the new normal. During the last one year, we have experienced a situation which mankind has never experienced for the last two millennia, mankind had never experienced a full year of lockdown of the world. 
never experienced anything of this scale, no matter the wars, the famines, or the droughts, or whatever natural calamities have happened, nothing of this scale. So it is very natural that last one year must have been the greatest year of learning in human history, must be the greatest year of learning. If we look back to February 2020, just a year back, where we stood, if I have to visualize imagery, it's like somebody who is tentative about swimming, doesn't know how to swim, standing on the banks of a river and watching and thinking, when do I get inside the river? And suddenly the river banks collapse and you find yourself in deep water. And the swimming is hassled. It's expedited. That's what probably happened. At the turn of this millennium, 20, 2000, something happened very epoch making in this world. Machines became very intelligent and internet connected the entire world, converted this world into a small village. People could talk to one another without any loss of time. People could exchange ideas without any loss of time. And machines were getting it. The World Economic Forum, since then, have been predicting every year, year after year, that the jobs that existed in previous two millennia are going to cease by 2020, 2050, that means halfway down the first century of the, this millennium. Not a single job title will exist, which existed in the previous two millennia. Yet, it did not sink properly into our heads. So adaptation to technology, adaptation to change, faced a lethargic response. A lot of inertia was there. Probably it was God's way of breaking the inertia. 2020 will be remembered in many ways. It may be remembered as the year of COVID-19 pandemic. But I believe when centuries down, historians will write the history, they will say that this year was the most educative year for mankind in the entire history until another such situation arrives. Thus the theme of the conclave could not have been more appropriate. If you look at last one year, how people have tried to grapple, what has been the trends. And if we try to expel, extrapolate it, whether you follow a linear graph, or you use some complex methodology of computation into the future, whatever path you take, that's the future for us. I am sure all the learned paper contributors, researchers who are going to present their papers this afternoon and tomorrow, they are going to share their experience. And together, it will be an invaluable offering. And when it gets all concised into a form of a book, that will be an invaluable reading for all of intellectuals all over the world. So today, those who, are, those who have assembled here are in no mean task. We are, this is our opportunity to contribute to something very, very meaningful, very, very substantial to so thank you all for being here. Our honorable founder this morning called me up and said he should be excused from this because he owns a bigger responsibility to his constituency, which called him today morning to be there with them. And you know all of, all of you know him. His heart is for the poor, his heart is for the people who need him.
He told me, my affection is not going away from you. I will be very much with you, even if physically not here. So take my wishes, convey it to all the participants, all the speakers, and the conference will be a huge success. Thank you all for listening to me presently. And once again, I welcome you on behalf of all my faculty colleagues, all my staff and students of Kids School of Management. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your valuable words. We are privileged to have Professor Rushikesh Mohanty, the Vice Chancellor of KIT Dean to be University with us. Professor Mohanty has extensive research experience in distributed computing, software engineering, business process re-engineering, and mobile computing. He has a vast teaching experience and has published extensively in reputed national and international journals. Sir, I request you to address the gathering. Thank you very much for nice introduction. Good afternoon to all of you. We have with us uh, our esteemed director of uh, management school, Mr. Mahapatra, and uh, Mr. Mishra, the dean, and Professor Subadhi, the convener of this uh, conference. Of the DAS, we have uh, the director of uh, world management, Mr. Parida, and uh, our director, HR, Sivanand Babu, and the dean, Mr. Das, dean of language, and uh, all the distinguished professors, colleagues, senior professors, my participants of this conference, offline and online present here. And uh, we have the chief speaker, Professor Sultan, is there connected from University of Edinburgh. I welcome on behalf of the university to all of you to this uh, edition of the conference. I think the, the context of the conference is already said by Professor Mishra, one of the convener of the conference. And uh, the chair, Professor Mahabhatra, has already told that you know how important it is in the present context. The world has changed, and the world keeps changing. This is not the first time he said dynamic world, it, it keeps changing. Maybe the gradient of change in last year is little bit, I mean, not little bit, it is more. But where the management, the study of management science is always, it deals with the, the changes, how we manage the changes. So this is what uh, the School of Management here in KIT has been conscious and has risen to this occasion, this particular occasion of two drastic change, what has happened in 2020 and has set the world in a, in a totally different unknown atmosphere, unknown ecosystem for work, for living, for everything. But management sciences is, always has a, a tendency to look ahead and looking ahead and analyzing is, is what the academicians, the researchers, they look for. And the KIT University has taken the research 
to its one of the prime jobs and in that spirit the school of management here has a lot of contribution towards the research one the 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 university is clocking every year we have also with us here professor kundu the director of the research at the university level i think with all their their participations the encouragement what this this conference uh, will generate will take the the research to the next level what in the generally abstractly if we say that you know the managing the new world the dynamic world i just see it is something like the four p's we predict what it will be and then after the predicted hypothesis you know we propose that this is what probably we should take up and after the propositions you know we prove that you no know, this is what we need to practice we implement this is how this predict propose proof and the practice and this is not this is what i think knowingly or unknowingly this the founder of professor achyutya samant of this university has done he could see that education is is the what will make the change in the coming years 25 years back so that will be the game changer and this is how the ait university is they are here at this stage at the institute of eminence if we go for the at this present world if we again want to go ahead with the same spirit we would like to replicate the same spirit of 4p so this the new world now what is has appeared with in front of us is something very very different i mean the world which is a mix of tangible and intangible things we we see something and we transit with the among persons what it has been the physically but now in the digital space lot of transactions we see we we perform but they are not visible but they are visible only in the digital space we have the entities like on the cyber space like different apps software software agents they are working for us now the scope of management is not only among the people and the machine what it has been in the classical term but now the management has to take the new world new world of entities it is physically present which is also digitally present the digital world is now something very new world i just remember from the epic a story some of you may be knowing that story the story of the new heaven when the king shankho asked that no yes he wants to have a heaven which the king indra he rules he is to have a, that kind of heaven and he goes to the a sister a sister tells that no you cannot have a heaven again another heaven but bishwamitra competes and you know he tells okay i will give you the heaven and it creates a heaven and sends trishanku with his yogic power to that new heaven but but he was kept and the middle and you know trishanku was kept hanging down but but that is where the in this heaven the trishanku is there that is a something like a very indecisive state the state where 
which is which is uh, though heaven but it is uh, not essentially heaven so if you see that uh, that mythological story in this present context what we see that you know there is a lot of indeterminism involved and in this indeterminate form of the world we need to have a decision very strong decisions and these strong decisions to make we need a, a lot of research we need the confluence of not only the the social science confluence of the role of technology and the role of of philosophy philosophy of the uh, human kind for which the kaiat university the noble founder has set the philosophy of life with the kindness and the compassion what it does and this is what the new world is looking for and that is what we have seen to 2020 once that compassion which they will be not blurred in the rules regulations of management or administration or something else so i am sure the researchers will take this this conference year by year to new heights and i congratulate all of them those who have have participated and also from the university i extend my sincere thanks to the chief speaker professor sudan and also other speakers those who are delivering uh, their uh, the research findings and also including professor sudan other distinguished researchers i extend my open invitation that to visit the university whenever the situation is normal we look forward to your visits and we will have a opportunity to interact with you in person thank thanks a lot and i wish you very best and also i thank all the organizers those who have made it possible thank you very much thank you so much sir we are glad to have with us professor mark sutton an environmental scientist and a professor at the university of edinburgh uk professor sutton is the chair of international nitrogen initiative and co-chair of task force on reactive nitrogen he also has been working with the united nations environment program supporting their work through the global program of action on the protection of marine environment since 2012 He takes interest in research in the area of environmental management and solutions. Professor Sutton, kindly address the gap. Is unmuted. Uh, thank you, everybody, and good morning. It's with you in uh, electronic Bhubaneswar. Uh, even if I cannot be with you today in person, um, but I think. this is the message that here we are on this e conference it's a great opportunity for us and i'd like to uh, thank uh, the the words of professor mohapatra mahanti and uh, and of course um is very happy to work with my colleagues tapan adya and rabi sabod from kit university i'm going to share a few slides put them on the screen and hopefully they can guide us on our journey of this discussion I hope we uh, have this screen up and available now. If you don't see the screen, somebody should shout. So I'm going to tell you about nitrogen. It's the the challenge I face day to day. Um, I say that nitrogen is everywhere and invisible, and I'll tell you why. And we're putting that in the context of this whole COVID change uh, challenge. Um, and actually, in some bizarre ways, how it is accelerating our work. on sustainable nitrogen management 
for planet Earth. It's holding us up, but it's also speeding us up. And that is perhaps the surprise. On the screen, you see a whole load of logos. Uh, Professor Mahanti already mentioned about internationalism. And clearly what you see here is India, South Asia, United Kingdom, the world working together on this great global challenge. So first off, why care about nitrogen? What is nitrogen? First of all, 78% of every breath we take, breathe in, this is nitrogen at 78%. So it's, uh, we really depend on it for a stable atmosphere. Too much oxygen would be a bad thing. It's critical for world food production. Um, we're taking the nitrogen out of the atmosphere as N2, turning it into ammonia, other nitrogen forms, the number one fertilizer. It's also 2% of world energy in that one reaction. Uh, so it's a huge energy sink um, to make from N2 in the atmosphere to all these fertilizer forms. But what is forgotten is it's a little known source of pollution. It's everywhere invisible around us. And I'll show you why that is. Um, and also an opportunity to cross boundaries as we link up the huge amount of issues that are connecting through nitrogen and an opportunity to go towards a more sustainable earth. And my point is that nobody knows about it. If you were sitting there today, my guess is that very few of you thought about nitrogen as you ate your breakfast. Um, my message is we should all be thinking about this uh, right at the heart. If, if you think about how much awareness we have of carbon now on the planet, with carbon and climate, nitrogen is just the same. We need to know about it if we are to act. So what is nitrogen? First off, that's the molecule dinitrogen, two nitrogen atoms together, triple bond, very stable. It means it's inert, gives stability to the atmosphere. And then a compound like ammonia, nitrogen and three hydrogens, nitric oxide, um, nitrogen and an oxygen, nitrogen dioxide. Both of these two are kind of the content of urban air pollution. Once it starts reacting, it forms nitrates in particulate matter. So the very fine particulate matter, deep, drawing in deep, ammonium nitrates is one of the key compounds. Nitrous oxide, that's laughing gas, but it's no laughing matter when we talk about this as a greenhouse gas that is 300 times more powerful than carbon dioxide. So on that screen, I've just listed a few, and there are many, many more, which makes nitrogen so complicated, you could say so interesting. Now, what about this too much of a good thing? This is a very famous graphic um, looking at so-called planetary boundaries. The red circle is what would be sustainability threshold uh, beyond it. And it's clear that nitrogen and the bottom left, phosphorus, genetic diversity are way out of balance. We have triple the amount of nitrogen uh, through human activities. And in essence, we are force feeding the planet. Here's a rather strange image of the world as a hamburger. But essentially, we're pumping so much nitrogen to produce all our feed that we're changing the planetary system in huge amounts of ways we never thought of before. And here's another view of nitrogen. What happens to that nitrogen when it leaks out? Because we think of nitrogen for food security, but the reality is that 80%, 80% of that nitrogen is lost to the environment, is leading to problems of air quality. There's India Gate. A lot of that will be fine particulate matter, including nitrogen. It's leading to problems of water quality with uh, nitrate in water pollution, but also interacting with climate. Uh, you think about the coral death problem of climate, it's not just about climate, it's also about pollution. There's nitrogen at the heart. It's about soil quality getting the nitrogen balance and organic matter right in soils, and about biodiversity. When that nitrogen comes down onto ecosystems, they grow differently as certain plants are lost and, and the whole biodiversity can be lost in, in various areas with too much nitrogen. So this is five good reasons to worry about nitrogen. And I'll add in an extra one, which is even if you don't count those ecological costs and you simply multiply the amount of nitrogen lost by the price, the fertilizer price on the open world market at something like $1 per kilogram nitrogen, you get $200 billion per year of wasted resource annually. It's a huge loss. What it means is until now we've had a fragmented problem. 
fragmented because we think of air quality differently to water quality. We talk about biodiversity in another room. And in climate, there's climate discussed, but we're talking carbon there. So let's forget about nitrogen. Nitrogen becomes everywhere and invisible, a fragmented problem that we ignore. So what our research is doing in the South Asia nitrogen hub, um, working with our colleagues across India, across all countries of South Asia, is about bringing these together and showing that a joined up approach is going to help us move forward, overcome the barriers to change, win, win, wins, for action, including the economy. And here we are, here's a man at the heart of it. He's wanting to grow his crops. He's showing us some azolla as a nitrogen fixing crop. He doesn't want to use fertilizer, this particular farmer. And so he's very proudly showing me his, his cedar tray for growing up the azolla. We need to find inventive ways to manage nitrogen better, to feed people, to have a clean planet. Now, coming to our research, this is a picture actually from the a National Rice Research Institute, not far from Bhubaneswar in Katak. Um, and you see the various scientists out in the field making their measurements. We are trying to understand through these measurements how much ammonia nitrogen is going into the atmosphere and see if we can get agreement for all our different methods. This is so we're having a great time in our research. Um, and of course, under COVID, we are not doing that right now. So it's been a huge barrier to our research in some ways. It's made us sit back and think, as the professors have said earlier on, uh, reassess the way we are working and, and how are we moving forward. The next thing to say is that our research is not just about research on the ground, making measurements, but it's also about mobilizing action. And I want to show you what we've been doing in the last years about mobilizing towards the sustainable development goals. We've worked with the United Nations Environment Program to launch a global campaign on sustainable nitrogen management. And I would say that if it were not for traveling the earth on airplanes and meeting people and getting to know each other, we, it would have been very difficult for us to achieve that. We have this narrative now about halving nitrogen waste. We were to halve nitrogen waste, we're looking to save $100 billion a year. Out of that, we have uh, agreed through the support of Indian government um, and other countries around the world, a resolution at the United Nations Environment Assembly. There's the number. And that resolution is saying, let's take action in the world on nitrogen. So we've gone from researchers to the world with the United Nations. It's a great example of internationalism. The half nitrogen waste goal is there. That's been developed. We launched it in 2018 the International Nitrogen Initiative, INI. Um, and in the Colombo Declaration in Sri Lanka in 2019, 14 UN member states agreed the ambition to halve nitrogen waste. That has rapidly been followed up by the European Union, who've now embraced that in their farm to fork strategy and their biodiversity strategy. We're seeing this goal going places, it's happening. But it's been happening Primarily because we met, we sat down, we discussed in person. So how are we going to work on this future challenge in a world where we are not meeting? And how can our research change? So let's just think about the problem. We cannot get into the field. Uh, people are home working, homeschooling. There's extra challenges there. Our team is getting ill. That's the reality of COVID. On the other hand, we are benefiting from great trust from prior meetings in person. Four or five meetings from across India, across South Asia, we know each other now well. And I'm sure many of you on this call will know each other. So how can we build on that going forward? We're accelerating our e-meetings and learning differently. It means that in the past, we had a meeting over three days. Now we're finding out, well, we don't need to travel. So our meeting structure changes. Uh, a couple of meetings together on a few days, but then another one the next week, another one the next week, nudging work forward. Everybody has become much more comfortable with this platform. It's gone much faster. So we have accelerated progress with e-meetings. We skip the airports, we skip the jet lag. In a way that is helping us be much more effective as well as see our families. And that's kind of important as well. Another one is improving access to dangerous regions. Uh, my best example here is um, Afghanistan. I am not allowed to visit Afghanistan. My work will not allow that. 
Um, but through this e-world, we're now able to have much more easy meetings, get in, have more regular discussions in a way. So it's, it's a leveling out um, compared to previous. Um, of course, it's also improved gender access to meetings for people. Many people coming now to the e-meetings who would not have been able to be there in the past. We face big challenges. Here's a, a picture I recently shared with our project uh, across you know, 35 institutes. Extra time will be needed. We have to go slower. We will need increased coordination costs. We have to understand as well that we're going to have to operate at variable speed. Under COVID, we cannot tell people to slow down and we cannot tell them to speed up. So it's about learning by doing. I want to give you one example or two to finish. And the first off, here is a picture of the nutrient cycling. Um, nitrogen resource to flows through food and feed, humans consuming food and driving that, and of course, return of nutrients in sewage and in manures. Combustion sources and also returning, can we recapture some of that nitrogen from combustion, number five at the bottom, which is actually work going on in Kit University, our partners right now. So here's the challenge, and those, each of those numbers reflects an area of solutions. Um, solutions in agriculture, solutions in transport and industry, wastewater treatment, societal consumption pro programs, not eating too much meat. We know that is bad for the environment. Uh, we have to moderate the amount of meat and dairy we eat. Spatial optimization. So there's a whole list of measures. That's all about nitrogen. But the key here is, We've developed recently under COVID um, this guidance document. It's been ongoing for three years, but we needed to bring it to conclusion. And we were able to do that in Geneva, in the United Nations and get that document adopted at the United Nations. It was the first ever meeting of what is called the uh, Air Convention for Air Pollution uh, on an E format. And so the governments agreed that adopted our document and we never even went to Geneva. This is a, a massive change compared to the past. It's clearly a message for the future. So how is COVID transforming our work? Uh, we've gone from meetings to e-meetings. We have a question of where is the ET break? How are we gonna drink tea together and get to know each other? That means replacing the bar with the e-chat bar. And I've just put in the side of the chat bar for you, a link to the nitrogen song from Ricky Kez. You'll see that have a look later. We need for spin out in small discussions of getting to know each other, not just the big meeting, but the small discussions too. The videos and e-training, this is a great way forward. Um, and we're working hard and producing lots of videos in our hub addressing the nitrogen challenge. Lastly, there is no going back. The future is a hybrid meeting, just as we are doing today. And the question for us is gonna be, how are we gonna to learn to optimize the best hybrid meeting, because in a way, a hybrid meeting is even harder than e-meeting. We have to satisfy everybody in the room. We have to satisfy everybody online. And I think that's gonna be a lot of imagination as we develop going forwards. So here's our message. We, we're going towards an interconvention nitrogen coordination mechanism, getting all the UN conventions working together. We're looking to save this $200 billion. We've made progress in the past, by actual meetings. Um, and this is the kind of thing, we would be meeting your minister, Harsh Vardan, who was minister there. We'd be meeting uh, people in the field. And, and this is myself in the middle. This is Ricky, uh, the songwriter, Ricky Kesh, um, talking with those farmers in the field. And, and there is Tapanaja just here as well, your colleague from KIT. Um, Ricky's wrote his, his, his songs. Um, he's mobilizing to a higher level. This is a great chain, but it involves meeting people. He's now produced the nitrogen song, but I put the chong on the chat bar, and that is, of course, illustrating the importance of the chat bar in this world. Great things going forward. The president of Sri Lanka joined the General Assembly of the United Nations. He spoke about nitrogen. It was all in e format. So, this is our challenge for us going forward how to do that. And this year is the year of the COP Climate 26. And how will we get there? The answer is how we're getting there is through e-workshops. We're gonna be putting discussions on the table about why care about night and climate. Again, we're gonna to have to do all of that without meeting. That's the challenge we face. It in a way will help us go faster. It will hinder the field research, but we have to take the opportunities. 
And with that, at some point in the future, we will all meet again, uh, probably in smaller meetings, but we have to find the way forward with these e-approaches and take the opportunities. And with that, thank you everybody for that. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. A very good afternoon, all of you, respected dignitaries of the dais, Professor Mahanti, Professor Mahapatra, Professor Mishra, of the dais, Director HR Mishra. Director KSRM, my respected faculty colleagues, scholars, student volunteers, and all the participants, those who are attending online. I'll be very brief, four minutes, to offer the formal vote of thanks. And of course, I'll share my experience how we conducted at a short notice, this particular event, which was perhaps uncertain because of the COVID uncertainties. If we remember, we decided that we should conduct one international conference and we thought during November 20. And the date was, which was available to us, end of February. So we had hardly four months. And when we met, we had organizing committee. And we all thought that we'll be hardly getting 60 to 70 papers. But something unprecedented happened beyond our imagination, beyond our expectation. We got over 270 papers. So we had the problem of plenty issue, the issue of scheduling all those papers just in one and a half days. Because we earlier expected we'll be getting 60 papers, it will be easy to schedule within one and a half days. And we had long plan to have a pre-conference workshop also. If I include the pre-conference RM workshop, in total, we have scheduled as high as 18 sessions in just two days. So it was really a huge challenge. And uh, if I look back to the statistics, which we got, as you can see, the count is up to 284. We actually received 290 plus responses. And with most difficulty, we had certainly stayed around 264 entries. And now it is 270 kind of thing. And as expected, 
majority of the contributions by post are from India. It is up to 89%. But one good thing for school of management that we got participation from over 20 countries. And a very interesting statistic I would like to say are the gender equity and the female participants here are around 54%. And actually, to be very honest, admittedly, I was tense for the first time in my life. And that was read by my wife. She snatched away my mobile for two nights. And I was under tremendous pressure how it can happen to 70 plus papers in just one and a half days. I have prepared one slide dedicated to this wonderful man, Professor Achita Samanta. I'm missing him, but I was searching to find a good photo of Professor Samanta. Then I found the famous popular quotes with the hashtag of AS quotes. And I got the message. Challenge yourself to discover the true potential. Sir, we always wonder that how you do marvel and you never tell us the difficulty, the pains you really might have faced doing the wonders in Crete and outside Crete. We are grateful, sir. You are an inspiration. Now, I would have a special mention of my senior research colleague, Mark. Mark, I think uh, you can see the pictures. Sorry, if you don't mind, I will use some of your personal pictures. <laughs> Every time I interact with you physically or online, I am just impressed. And particularly, Mark, please see the inside picture. Without your permission, I have sold it, made it public. And your devotion and your fellow feeling that really impressed me. And that particular picture was something like a falling in love at first sight. And I was not sure whether Mark will be agreeing to my request. He's actually a busy person, very, very busy person. And uh, I do not have any hesitation in comparing by connotation, by constructs, what our founder has and what Mark has. Simply dressed, deliver the best. And that's what I find a similarity between Mark and our founder. And the left side pick is one of these such online meetings where I just ping Mark. Can you please confirm whether you are there or not? I think this is the picture when Professor Jana was there. His picture is also there. He confirmed, yes, I'm available for you. So I communicated to my director, Pro PC Ma'am, who agreed, yes, Mark should be there. And uh, coming to uh, the president of this function, sir, I borrowed this picture from your Facebook today with your permission. And uh, those who is in close touch with Professor Mahanti, they would define him as a friend, philosopher, and guide, and you would all agree that the philosopher word should be highlighted. And uh, just for uh, information, I do respect him, and I have academic relation with him since last three decades. Sir, you have been an inspiration for all of us, sir. I must thank the support and encouragement of each and every member of the organization committee, which includes respected pro vice chancellor ma'am, registrar, our director sir, dean sir, and all other professors of this school and other schools of kids. I would just like give a glimpse that what work has really gone by. We had several physical meeting, online meeting, and also meetings in the kids. Case some garden library. 
So we have been meeting just to get the best possible like advice from all the members. And this is just a glimpse that we had several dozens of meetings, both in physical and online mode. I thank all the members of organizing committee. My special thanks to all the revered resource persons, session chairs, co-chairs, keynote speakers, rapporteurs, paper presenters, who are the main source of the inspiration for this event, and all delegates who have registered. I think the count is more than 370, and we all are really grateful to you all. I would have a special mention how we prepared here, particularly the experts from extreme east and far west, Australia, US, and UK. They just wanted to confirm the timing. There was a time different geographical barrier, and we had several rounds of conference call trial runs. This is one of the pics uh, just to show, which I had with Melina Abu from Australia and Niranjan Pati from US. I think early morning, which is not convenient for us, but convenient for them, we did that. And some of the volunteers joined in coordinating, helping that. Yes, we'll be there to help you out. And they confirmed them only. So we had several rounds of such trial runs before this event happened. I would, just to save time, will not mention many people here, but the list is very long. Directly or indirectly, I have been getting help from each and everybody of this school and of this university. Just to name a few, Mr. Samavas Naik, Mr. Sanjay Garai, Mr. Ranjan Barik, Manas, who is the web designer, who have been like obliging me at least more than once a day. So he has been changing the content of the web page and uh, the great man, the tallest man, uh, Sugato is there, hats off for your support. And the list is very uh, long, but I would certainly mention, mention Sir Anadar Rusikes, who is popularly known as Kalu or Kalu Bhai, for your ever smiling face, contagious smile, and uh, for serving us stimulating tea cups to each and every member of my committee. And uh, this is my last, last slide. I have received unconditional love and support from many volunteers who are physical present and also virtually. I can show screenshots like how dear alumni, they have been like giving SMS that we are watching you, sir. You are doing a hard job. And uh, my family, which includes my wife, I think uh, she's also a support base for me. And last but not the least, my fabulous wife, led by Sumita, Smriti, Srividya, Saswad Jyoti, who deserve all the credit if it is a success. Thanks, everybody. Uh, can I have uh, Mark, please, if you can please respond to me? You are there? Yes. Uh, can you hear me? You hear me? Hi, Mark. Thanks a lot. Yes, uh, thank you so much, Ravi. This campus is really a wonderful campus. I'm not talking like global standard. I know Scotland, heaven on earth, in the Indian standard at least, to love to spend a couple of nights here at least. I, on behalf of founder and honorable vice chancellor, invite you and team of your professors, scholars who are more than 100, please visit the campus. We may host your next SNS meet. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you so much, Ravi. I very much look forward to the opportunity to coming to Kirtin Bhubaneswa again. I'm not sure how soon we will be able to travel under COVID, but we will be traveling in due course, and we will be learning the art of how to make this hybrid meetings work even better.